Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, this video is the sort of follow-up to my LED explorations that I uh, did in a previous video. If you're new to the channel, welcome uh, new subscribers and you might want to go back and take a look at that as I describe some of the effects that I wanted to achieve and the kinds of control that I wanted. Um, so basically, I have moved on uh, based on some suggestions from many uh, fantastic viewers. And can I thank everybody who stepped forward and was offering to, you know, help me out and, and send me ideas. And I was really overwhelmed, uh, a little, li literally and figuratively, actually, with the offers. And so I just want to extend a real big thank you to the people who've uh, come forward and tried to help me. Um, I actually have a good friend um, that I haven't talked to in quite a while, uh, but I contacted him and he's sort of an LED master and he's um, helped me a little bit as well to get started. So I have a pretty good resource at hand and I was tapping into that today as I was playing with my new equipment. Um, so basically I've moved to an Arduino uh, programmable board and that is a, um, a board that allows you to um, you know, code the board to create whatever effects you want, and then you can control multiple, uh, de you know, devices from the board. So I should be able to control servos from it as well, as well as multiple lighting effects in different areas. So it's really expanding, you know, the amount of options that I can do, and gives me um, a lot more control over them. So I've shifted to RGB LEDs, which are red, green, blue, so they can produce any color. Um, and I'm not going. Let me just preface right now. I am not going to be uh, trying to explain everything that I do with this as I go along with it because it's kind of complicated, it's a little bit esoteric, and it's um, not, I'm not a master of it enough to feel confident to tell you anything about it. Um, so, you know, uh, if you're interested in trying to understand a little bit about the equipment I'm working with and, and what I'm, you know, what I'm working within in terms of the language and all of that, you might want to go to adafruit.com, adafruit.com, and I'll put a link in the description. Uh, but that's where I purchased the Arduino board, and they have a lot of tutorials there on how to, uh, you know, to set up different effects, how to get familiar with the, the coding for it, um, and all of that. So that might be something, if you're really interested in it, that might be a good place to start. That's kind of where I started as well, but you might need a little extra help, at least I did. Uh, so... Without further ado, what I'm going to do is uh, we'll break off the tripod here because the board it has to be connected to my laptop um, and I didn't want to move my laptop for the video. So we're going to go over, we're going to take a look at the board, I'm going to show you just the effect that I achieved today. I, four hours later, six hours later, I don't know how much time I've been spending on this over the last few days, but I finally got it to at least do the starting things that I wanted it to do. So I'll show you that, and we're also going to take a look at the very big foundation for the cliff, and I'm going to explain a little bit about some of my plans for that. So uh, let's take a walk. So this is basically where I've been holed up for the last uh, several hours today. Um, and I uh, really, if you know me by now, if you've been watching my videos, I get pretty OCD and locked in on something. And I wanted to show the customer that I'd made some progress on this lighting front. Um, he's been super patient and, and very excited about my adventures here. But I wanted to at least have something that I could say progress is being made um, and a major breakthrough um, has happened today. So um, just to give you a very quick explanation of what you're looking at here, this is a breadboard for those of you who don't know much about electronics um, with um, a variety of jumper wires here that goes to the Arduino board. The Arduino board is a uh, uh, basically it's a, a pre-assembled uh, microcontroller that is um, got all sorts of jacks on it that you can then jack into for different kinds of pin outputs so that you can control different devices. Um, this is an RGB um, LED and then I have a switch here. So I wanted to achieve um, basically uh, two, well I wanted to achieve three things. One is I wanted to be able to change the color of the bulb. Two is I wanted to be able to um, fade the bulb up and down in brightness. And three, I wanted to be able to have the switch toggle between multiple effects. Um, because if I'm going to invest all of this time into doing all this stuff, 
um, it's, it makes sense then to be able to produce multiple effects with a single button or a couple buttons available to the customer. So if you want a flickering flame, you can have that. If you want some, um, you know, an eerie green, green glow coming out of the, uh, you know, the entrance, he could do that when he has evil forces. Um, he could make the lava look hotter, whatever that, that kind of option. He'll be able to control whatever functions I pre-program into the board. Um, and before I say, before I show anything here, um, there are going to be definitely people who are going to say, um, don't include the whole board, build a smaller one yourself out of, you know, fewer components, it'll be cheaper. Um, the board's about $30 just for reference. For this project, um, I'm probably just going to include the board. Future projects, I'll work on building my own, uh, but really just getting it to work is my main goal here and um, for the cost of the project itself uh, this is a very small investment so uh, before anybody sends me anything on that please um, uh, that's that's the plan right now and I'm probably not going to change it so um, here's my switch there's my bulb when I push the switch the first time it goes green when I push it a second time it cycles through three colors and it fades up and down now that may not look like a very awesome uh, achievement, but basically this shows me that I can control two effects and that amongst those effects I can include fading as well as color changes. The next step will be um, to get a random flicker into the bulb and then I'll be able to control what color flickers and uh, all of that sort of idea. Just to give you a sense, this is probably not going to show up well on the screen, um, but this is um, what um, the sketch in Arduino, this is called a sketch. This is um, what I have been putting together um, to make those effects happen. So that took me a little while to learn, but it's provided me with a tremendous amount of basics and I think I should be able to continue modifying it um, relatively easily, especially with a little help in the future. So let's take a look at the actual cliff base and we'll go from there. So I didn't drag the lights uh, over here to light this. This is, you know, super preliminary work. But what you see here basically is um, about 60 inches across. It's a little uh, around 40 inches wide. And uh, this is going to come up about two feet. Now the, the stack of foam that you see in the middle uh, comes up about um, 10 inches or so from the foundation. It's based on a one and a half inch uh, sheet of foam board at the moment. And it occurred to me that building this out of a solid, you know, multi-layered stack of foam is both A, wasteful for foam, and B, is going to make doing the interior where the entrance is going to be a lot more difficult. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to build um, a substrate within the interior and leave most of the interior hollow, actually. I'm going to build up the um, edges. I might go a little thicker than this. This is about four inches. And this is designed mainly to give me some carving area to, uh, you know, to texture it um, without breaching the interior. The corners are probably going to need a little bit more material as those are going to be the, you know, the most cropped areas here. Um, but this allows me to then build this up to this uh, 10 or 12 inch height. I have to remeasure it, I forget. I take a look at my diagrams. Then what I'll do is I'll put in a middle layer that is um, two inch thick foam board and that will be the floor for the entrance. Then I can build walls on the inside, a, a roof, texture all of that before I assemble it and then continue building it up to the full two foot height and then top it with another two inch uh, layer on the top. That should be uh, more than strong enough um, for gameplay and shipping purposes and is going to save somewhat on the weight, um, you know, to some degree as, you know, believe it or not, once you get enough foam in here, it is going to start adding to the weight a little bit. Um, but also it's going to save on some materials, allows me to use some scraps to um, shore up the interior. But most importantly, it's going to give me an easy platform to build the entrance before I erect the rest of the structure. And that um, pro progress will begin um, next week. It took me a little while to sit down and actually map out um, you know, what kinds of dimensions I'm going to need and how much foam it's going to take. Um, so I need to make a, a hardware run to pick up the remainder of the foam that's needed. Um, but once I pick up that foam, uh, construction will start progressing on this relatively quickly. And the nice thing is, is that while I'm working on there's my computer. While I'm working on the lighting effects, I can begin construction of the interior uh, simultaneously, and that way, when that is done, uh, when the uh, hopefully when that's done, the lighting will be ready, and then I can throw it in. Um, and I'll 
basically probably, well, I'll know a little bit down the road, but there's many options of places I could put the wires uh, that will be relatively unobstructed. Could even come up through the top floor and then have a little rock cap for the buttons. There's, there's numerous options there, so I'm not too worried about progressing on the construction at this point now that I feel like I understand the lighting a little bit better. So that gives you a, a quick look at uh, the progress that I've been making on this project. Um, it may, like I said, look a little small at this stage, but there were just a lot of really big hurdles uh, to overcome with coming up to speed on the Arduino board. And um, also actually took me um, a little bit of time to sit down with that foam and really map it out and think about it. It's a very, very large structure. Um, you know, it's going to be... Uh, almost comparable to that the castle that I did a little ways back. There's the, the back uh, finger if you want to go back and take a look at that. Of course, very different structure, um, but it's going to, you know, it requires its own set of problem solving. And so now that that's done, construction can begin there. The lighting can get refined, put it all together, and you should definitely come back uh, and see the channel in the future to see where I've gone with this, because I think this is going to be a pretty unique project for me. Um, and there potentially can be some other lighting options in the project. I've got a few more things to work out, and I don't want to talk about it too much until I work those things out. So, uh, keep your eye on the channel. Um, I also have a couple more videos that I want to shoot within the next couple days. I was hoping to get them done today, but that sketch ate up my brain today. So if I sound a little punchy, that's probably why. But um, just want to say once again, I sincerely thank you for joining me. I do appreciate that and all the feedback and comments that I get. Um, I read everyone. Even if I don't respond to everyone, I do check and read every single comment that is sent to me and I do appreciate them. So um, thank you once again for joining me and uh, stay tuned for some more updates.